Kellogg's Pep. <coughs> Kellogg's Pep, the build-up wheat cereal with the prize in every package, invites you to share another thrilling adventure with Mark Trail. Battling the raging elements, fighting the savage wilderness, striking at the enemies of man and nature. One man's name resounds from snow-capped mountains down across the sun-baked plains. Mark Trail. Guardian of the forest. Protector of wildlife. Champion of man and nature. Mark Trail. It is shortly after dawn, and the silence of the Shoshone Indian Reservation in the Northwest is broken by the sound of horses' hooves. Lightfoot, chief of the Shoshones, rides out of the Indian village toward the east. Although he has seen the passing of 70 winters, he is erect in his saddle. Then suddenly another set of hoofbeats shatters the morning stillness. It is Dan Corbin, slim, natalie dressed general manager of Lightfoot Industries, jointly owned by the chief and his grandson, Robert. What's the idea of sneaking out on me, Chief Lightfoot? I sneak away from no man, Mr. Corbin. Our business is done. But your grandson's coming here today. Shall I tell him you want to sell out your interest in Lightfoot Industries? Break up the biggest oil and timber combine in the Northwest? Yes. This is true. Well, then at least tell me why so that I can report to him. Very well. Many days travel from here. There is a canyon known to no eyes but mine. The waters are clear and cool. The grass thick and rich. And upon it I have seen buffalo feed. Buffalo? There haven't been any around here for half a century. Because the men who squeeze oil from ground and strip timber from hills have driven them off. Well, I, Lightfoot, chief of the Shoshone, shall bring them back. You want me to tell this to your grandson? Yes. Tell him this is why I would sell all that I possess. That I have not much time left. That before I die... I must put the wealth back into the earth from where it came. Tell him this, Mr. Gold. You old... You're right. You haven't got much time left. In fact, you may not even come back from this ride. And so Chief Lightfoot rides away into an adventure that's chock full of thrills and excitement. Thrills and excitement that'll be fun to hear and would be even more fun to share. That is, if you're in shape to share the excitement. If you feel fit to get the fun out of it. You know, you want to feel fit for fun, so make Kellogg's Pep the main part of your breakfast every single day. Kellogg's Pep, the build-up wheat cereal. Wheat in its most delicious form. Toasted flakes of wheat, ready to eat, fun to eat. Wonderful with milk and sugar. Kellogg's Pep helps to make you feel fit for fun because it packs a powerhouse of food elements you need to build up strength, build up energy, build up strong bones and steady nerves. And listen, every single package of Pep also packs a prize, a handsome prize that I'll tell you about before the show is over. And remember, P-E-P means more than Pep, the build-up wheat cereal. P-E-P also means prize in every package. So if you want to have your fun and eat it too, ask your mother when she goes shopping, bring me a package of Kellogg's Pep. That's Kellogg's Pep. Hours after Chief Lightfoot has left his reservation, two riders leisurely cross the plains. Their blood warmed by the noonday sun. They are Mark Trail and his young friend Scotty. They do not know that Lightfoot has left his village, for they are on their way to the Shoshone Indian Reservation at the express invitation of Lightfoot himself, who is Mark's old friend. You mean buffalo grazed here, Mark? Why, years ago, Scotty. They would have covered this plain for as far as your eye could see. Hey, what are you taking your rifle out of your saddle sling for? Just imagining, Mark. I can see them now. <laughs> You've got a vivid imagination. It must have been... What is it, Scotty? There. Hey, what are you shooting at? There in the grove of trees. I thought I saw a movement. You a deer. Thought. You know better than that, Scotty. Never shoot out a movement. Only an object. Suppose there had been somebody... Mark, what was that? Voice in that grove. Mark, you don't think... I don't know, Scotty. But we better find out fast. Scotty? 
Scotty, do you see anyone? No, Mark. I hey, hope. Over here. Help. Come on, Scotty. Oh, whoa, whoa, boy. Oh. Chief Lightfoot. Mark's trail. Scotty, tie up the horses. Right. Chief, what happened? Did that shot hit you? No, Mark. I was struck down by my ears. No bullet. What happened? My ankle is swollen. Broken, I fear. Well, let me see. Mm. Oh, I'm sorry, Chief. No, I don't think it's broken. Only sprained. <laughs> and there's still strength in these old bones. Well, how did this happen, Chief? I was riding when suddenly my pony reared and threw me. I see. Hey, Scotty. Yes, Mark? Uh, try to find the Chief's pony while I bind his ankle. Okay. Uh, this will hurt, Chief. No pain of the flesh could be as deep is the pain of my spirit. Well, that doesn't sound like your letter to me, Chief. You were pretty happy about the idea of restoring this land to a place where the Shoshone could live as they had in the past. <coughs> no, I'm sorry. Uh, that was before I had heard the tongue of Mr. Corbin. Mr. Corbin? Yes, the man who manages my grandson's wealth and mine as well. He has set my grandson against me and there is evil feeling. Mark, Mark, can you come here? I found the Chief's pony. Just a minute, Scotty. Uh, that feel better now, Chief? Yes. All right, then. I'll help Scotty with the horses. And we'll have you back at the TP and facing Mr. Corbin and your grandson in no time. What's the matter, Scotty? Can't you handle a horse yourself? It's not that, Mark. I called you over to look at something. Oh, boy. Oh, now, easy, boy. See? Blood oozing from under the saddle blanket of the Chief's horse. Uh, loosen the cinch under his belly, Scotty. All right. Steady, boy, steady. We're not going to hurt you. Okay, Mark. Now, let's see what's happened to your back. Easy, boy, easy, easy. Holy mackerel, Mark. His back's all cut up. Well, look. Sharp stones embedded in the saddle. Gosh. Now, it's an old frontier trick to make a horse buck, Scotty. The weight of the rider causes the stones to dig into the horse and he bucks. Then it was no accident the chief was thrown. No, Scotty, it wasn't. Someone wants Chief Lightfoot out of the way. Who? I'm afraid to answer that, Scotty. I only hope it isn't his own grandson. <laughs> Tell you, Mr. Lightfoot, if you let your grandfather split up Lightfoot Industries, you'll be ruined. Oh, I wouldn't say it's that drastic, Corbin. I'd still be a rich man. But, Mr. Besides, Lightfoot... Besides, when I talk to him, I'm sure he'll see how foolish this entire idea is. Now, quiet. Here comes my daughter. Papa? Papa, this is wonderful. Mm-hmm. So you like the Indian Reservation? It's just like the storybooks I've read in school. All that's missing is the buffalo. No wonder Grandpa wants to put them back. If I were living here, I'd want them back, too. Indians and buffalo kind of go together. <laughs> hear that, Corbin? Mm. First time she's ever been on a reservation in her entire 13 years, and already she's acting like the Indians of long ago. Well, might be that this affects a lot of people that way. Papa, look. Some men riding into the village. Oh, yes. Say, one of them looks it's like... the chief. And he's been hurt. Come on, let's see what's the matter. face again. Yes, my grandfather. But please don't try to talk. You're hurt. It is nothing. I suppose the man Corbin has told you what I wish to do. Yes, he has, but uh, we can talk of all that later. We will talk of it now. Uh, Chief, uh, perhaps I should leave. No, Mark. I wish you to hear this too. After all, you are blood brother to our tribe. Grandfather, wait, wouldn't... my grandson. Hear me out. Before you talk against my wishes, I ask that you do one thing for me. And uh, what is that? I have told Mark Trail of the way to the hidden canyon where buffalo yet graze. I want you to look on them once with your own eyes. But grandfather... Mark will guide you to this valley of peace. He knows the lore of the forests and the plains as well as the sun itself go with him, then return and talk to me. Tell me then that you wish to leave my wealth in smoke and the stone of the cities. Will you do this, son of my firstborn? All right, grandfather. I will go. Now. <laughs> Uh, 
Trail. How many more miles to this canyon? We're almost there, Corbin. You know, Mr. Trail, I confess I'm glad my grandfather asked me to do this and to take Nancy along. I'm happy you are, Mr. Lightfoot. See that bend up ahead? Yes. Well, when we round it, we should see the first view of the Chief's Canyon. Well, then let's hurry. All right. Come on, Mr. Corbin. Scotty and Nancy can follow in the rear. Well, Mr. Lightfoot? It's gorgeous, Mr. Trail. Awe-inspiring. Look, Corbin. Yeah. Well, how do we get down? We'll consider that tomorrow morning. Uh, we'll stay here for the night. Oh, I can't get over it. But, uh, the buffalo... Uh, we'll have to look for them. Uh, they won't look for us. Uh, Scotty? Yes, Mark? You and Nancy unsaddle your horses and tend to them. We're bedding down here for the night. And tomorrow, we go down into Buffalo Canyon. <laughs> I should help Mark get wood for the fire. What's Daddy doing? He's enjoying himself. Aren't you? Like I never have before. Oh, look, there's that cave we passed with the overhanging rock. I'm going in. Well, wait a minute, Nancy. Don't go in without me. Think I'm afraid of the dark? Nancy, come on out. There are paw prints all around this cave. It's some sort of an animal's den. Animal? Look out, Nancy, that overhanging rock. Nancy. Nancy, are you all right? Scotty, what happened? That, that rock, it fell and locked the entrance to the cave. Scotty, we're sealed anyway. Easy, sealed. Nancy. The others must have heard it. They'll get us out. And we have plenty of air. Lights coming in from the top of the entrance. Scotty, there's something in here. What? What? I, I just sense it. Keep still. Scotty, what was that? The, the growl of a mountain lion. <laughs> In the inky blackness of the block cave, Nancy and Scotty cringe against the rocks, waiting for the mountain lion to strike. In a moment, we will continue, so stand by. <laughs> Trapped in a cave with a hungry mountain lion. Say, wonder what will happen to Nancy and Scotty. We'll soon find out. But first, the makers of Kellogg's Pep, the build-up wheat cereal, ask you to listen to this important message. Boy Scout Week begins today. Marking the 40th anniversary of the Boy Scouts of America, Scout Week will be celebrated in every city, every town, and most villages by 2,300,000 Boy Scouts and Scout leaders. Their birthday theme, Strengthen the Arm of Liberty, will be portrayed in pageants, demonstrations, public ceremonies, and parents' night gatherings in every state of the Union. During Boy Scout Week, friends and parents will be invited to attend troop meetings and see for themselves how the Boy Scouts of America actually put democracy to work. Boy Scout Week finds the organization at the midpoint of its two-year crusade to strengthen the arm of liberty. As part of this program, the Boy Scouts of America seek to bring more boys into their ranks and give them the rich experience of scouting under volunteer leaders of the highest character. Why don't you get in touch with your nearest unit of the Boy Scouts of America? And now, back to the adventures of Mark Trail. Brought to you by Kellogg's Pep, the build-up wheat cereal. Kellogg's Pep, the cereal with the prize in every package. And I'll tell you about the swell prize in your Pep package before the show's over. On the rim of Buffalo Canyon in the northwest, Mark's young friend Scotty and Nancy Lightfoot have been trapped in a mountain lion's den by a cave-in. Mark and Robert Lightfoot, Nancy's father, run up to the den and see Dan Corbin standing there. Corbin, what happened? We heard a crash. Your daughter, Mr. Lightfoot, and that kid. They're trapped in a cave behind that big rock. My daughter? I saw them go in, and then before I could say anything, that rock started to crack and give. Well, give me a boost up the top of that rock. I told you that trip was foolish, Mr. Lightfoot. Now it may become tragic. It will be if you just stand around and talk. Now help me up the top of the rock. <laughs> Trail of anything Keep happens, quiet, Mr. Lightfoot. Scotty! Scotty, can you hear me? Yes, Mark. Are you both all right? We're not hurt, but there's a mountain lion in this cave. Mountain lion? Trail up my daughter. Shut sir. up. I told you, Mr. Lightfoot. Scotty! Scotty, now listen to me. Fire! I know, Mark. I've been burning paper, brush, anything. But I'm running out of stuff. All right. 
right, Scotty. Hoard your fire. Corbin, run back to the camp. Get the oil we brought along for the portable stove. Light this. You get our supply of rifle shells. Break them and spill the powder in a pile. And hurry, both of you. Hurry before it's too late. All right, Trail. Here's the oil. Hand it up. Scotty, how's your flame holding out? Getting low, Mark. He's coming closer, Scotty. Kick some fire toward him, Scotty. And move back again, Mark. All right, now listen. You're not completely sealed in. There's a hole up here. I know, Mark. Good. Now, take off your jacket. Tell Nancy to take hers off, too. All right, Mark. I'm going to pour this can of oil through the hole. Sop up all of it you can with your jacket. All right. Start pouring. Okay. Here it comes. You getting it, Scotty? Yes, Mark. Get the jacket drenched in oil. Then light one of them. The two of them should be enough to keep that line at bay for another hour. And by that time, we'll blast you out with gunpowder. Well, here goes our homemade stick of dynamite. But Trail, won't the blast hurt Scotty and Nancy? Uh, They're protected in the cave, Mr. Lightfoot. It won't be much of a blast. They're just enough to shake up the rocks blocking the entrance. Oh, you're going to touch it off. Uh, hand me that rifle. Uh, thanks. Now, we'll all walk back about 20 paces. Ready, Scotty? It worked. They're coming out. Trail, the mountain lion. It's okay, Scotty, it's okay. You kept your head all right. Oh, Nancy, Nancy, let me hold you. Oh, darling, you'll never be in danger again. Never. I'm calling this trip off right now. No, it's no use, Nancy. My mind is made up. But, Pop, I told you it was my fault. I shouldn't have run in there like a show. Never would have happened if we hadn't been in this godforsaken wilderness. Corbin's right. Nancy, you can't... But, Papa, you promised to your grandfather, my great-grandfather. A promise doesn't mean as much to me as your life. Nancy's alive, Mr. Lightfoot. Yeah, no thanks to you and Trail. That's not fair, Mr. Corbin. If it weren't for them... We wouldn't have been here. Mr. Trail didn't tell us to take this trip, and neither did Scotty. Look, Papa, be fair. Besides, we're right on the rim of Buffalo Canyon. Well, all right. One more day. Because it won't make any difference, I'll certainly oppose the Chief's plan to throw a fortune away on this wilderness after what's happened today. Whatever you say, Dad. But just keep remembering, I'm the only one to blame. This whole horrible accident was all my fault. Not even smoke left. The uh, others asleep? Sure. You know, it was decent of Nancy to say the whole thing was her fault. You're right. Particularly when it wasn't. What? That rock didn't fall. It was pride loose. Pride? Yes. I saw the marks on the rock structure where it split. Wood embedded in the gravel. And a few yards away, a long wooden limb. The end smashed and matted. But who would have... Well, I was with Mr. Lightfoot. And you were with Nancy. Mr. Corbin? Scotty, from now on, if the four of us aren't together, we don't take our eyes off Mr. Corbin. Well, there they are, Mr. Lightfoot. Buffalo. Yes, buffalo. Uh huh. There aren't very many, Mr. Trail. How many would you say there are? Oh, about 70. But, Trail, I thought my grandfather said there were more. Probably up the canyon away if you want to ride. Not me. He didn't ask you. Scotty. Sorry. Papa, please, let Think of it. These are the animals who were the food and, and the shelter and the clothes to our forefathers. All right, Nancy. I can at least pay that much homage to them. 
Let's go, Trail. Uh, count me out. I'll stay here and admire these 70. All right, Mr. Corbin. We'll leave the pack horses with you. The four of us will be back before sundown. Chief Lightfoot. Mr. Corbin. You made a quick recovery. Where are the others? What have you done to them? Me? They're out looking for more buffalo. They weren't satisfied with that small herd there. Uh, when I saw the pack... Wait a minute. What do you mean, what did I do to them? Sometimes the tongue speaks in haste. And that foot, it's still bandaged. You must have something pretty important to say to make this long ride that way. I will wait for the return of my grandson. Uh, But I won't. Get off that horse. Let go of that bridle. Oh, no, Chief. You're coming down. Off that horse. Let me. Easy, Chief. I can break your bones like sticks. What's this in your robe? A telegram? Yes. Well, maybe it'll be interesting. To my grandson. Not to me. It tells that you are a thief and have stolen money from the Lightfoot Companies. Well, save me the trouble of reading it. This is why you did not wish me to dispense of my wealth. Such a transaction would have revealed you for the fork-tongued liar you are. (laughs) Right, Chief. But you'll never have a chance to tell your grandson. What are you going to do? See those buffalo? I'm going to ride behind them. Scare them into a stampede. You will accomplish nothing by such foolish action. Oh, but I will. First, the butt of my gun... (coughs) Now, Chief, now to get those buffaloes stampeding right over you. Dan Corbin rides out wildly firing his gun. The frightened buffalo stampede in the direct path of the unconscious Chief Lightfoot. In a moment, we will continue. So keep listening. Well, here it is, the whole story about that prize in every package of Kellogg's Pep. A statuette. That's right, a handsome, brightly colored statuette of a cowboy, Indian, football, baseball, basketball player, or an animal of most any description. Your box of Pep may contain any one of 18 different statuettes. Trade them with your friends. Collect them. Each statuette stands on its own pedestal, so you can stand them up in toy villages, move them around in games. And remember, you don't send in a box top or wait for your prize. And you don't pay a single penny extra. Just look inside your box of pep and find your bright, colorful statuette. And there's a chance your prize may be a pep turbojet model plane with an aluminum jet-type wing, all ready to cut out, assemble, and fly. So tell Mother to pick the package with P.E.P. on the front. P.E.P. for Kellogg's Pep, the build-up wheat cereal. P.E.P. for prize in every package. Yes, to have your fun and eat it, too. Pick Pep the prize package. With the powerful powerhouse punch, pick Pep. Unaware that the herd of stampeding buffalo are headed straight in the direction of Chief Lightfoot, Mark, Scotty, Mr. Lightfoot, and Nancy are riding back to camp. Suddenly, they hear the ominous rumble of thundering hoofs. They spur their horses and race ahead. Look, Mark, the herd's stampeding. They're headed away from us. Where's Corbin? There he is. Trail by those trees. Now, come on. Whoa, boy. Whoa. Corbin, what happened? Oh, it was horrible, horrible. What are you talking about? Your grandfather, Mr. Lightfoot. He's out there on the ground. What? Oh, no. He came riding up a little while ago. His ankle was better. He said he wanted to see how you liked this land. But what happened? And the buffalo. He rode right into the herd. I warned him not to. And... Suddenly, a big bull charged his horse. Oh? There's nothing else to tell. The horse threw the chief, and the bull was on him before I could do anything. This place is a canyon of misfortune. Scotty, ride out and look for the chief. Right. I'll go with you, Scotty. All that's come of this idea is evil. He wanted me to help in restoring nature to this land. Look what it's done to him. Nature didn't do anything, but man did. And that man is Dan Corbin. What? What do you mean, Trail? Nature is my business. And I know that never, never under any provocation will a buffalo charge a mounted man. They accept horse and rider as a member of the herd. Why, well, it was on that principle that the Indians hunted the buffalo. Trail, is this true? Look at him, Lightfoot. Ask him about the rock slide that trapped Nancy and Scotty. Mark. Oh, boy. 
Here's the chief. Scotty, you shouldn't have moved him. He insisted, Mr. Trey. Grandfather. Son of my son. Chief, chief, don't talk. I have come to the end of my time. Please, Grandfather, be quiet. I can't understand how you lived through that stampede. He was in a small ravine, Mark. It gave him some protection. Scotty, the chief wants to talk. I lived my grandson. Only to tell you that this man is evil. This Corbin. Now listen, I won't stand. Corbin or my rifle will shut you up forever. I know now, my grandfather. Then you will not listen to Corbin's counsel. But only to your heart. I shall, grandfather. Mark, will you help my grandson make this restoration of my people's land the finest in the West? Yes, Chief. And it will be the best and most satisfying job that I've ever had. Good. Now my heart is light. I can pass from this earth in peace. Well, Scotty, I feel like a nice, lazy hunting trip after all this. Uh, ducks, maybe. Why, I can just see myself... Mark will go duck hunting on Wednesday, all right, and he'll take Cherry, too. But I bet he'd leave Cherry home if he knew the perils they face when they run into a killer. Learn all about the killer with a battery gun by tuning in same time, same station on Wednesday to... Mark Trail! Battling the raging elements, fighting the savage wilderness, striking at the enemies of man and nature. One man's name resounds from snow-capped mountains down across the sun-baked plains. Mark Trail! Remember to tune in then next Wednesday when Mark Trail will again be brought to you by the build-up wheat cereal, Kellogg's Pep. This program is entirely fictitious. The resemblance of any name, personality, or incident to an actual person or event is merely coincidental. This program came from New York. Mark Trail also appears in the comics of many of America's leading newspapers. Look for it daily and Sunday. Matt Crowley portrays Mark Trail and Ben Cooper is Scotty. Mark Trail is directed by Drex Hein. Today's story was written by Palmer Thompson. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. <laughs>